In the next video, we'll begin Chapter 3, Matter and Energy. Dietitians specialize in helping others learn about good nutrition and the need for a balanced diet. They need to understand energy and how matter can produce energy in our bodies. Matter is the material that makes up all things. It's anything that has mass and occupies space. We will classify matter into two broad categories of pure substances and mixtures, and then further separate those categories into subcategories of elements, compounds, homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. In a broad sense, matter is classified according to its composition. It can be classified as a pure substance that has a fixed or definite composition, or a mixture which contains two or more different substances that are physically mixed but not chemically combined. A pure substance is classified as a type of matter with a fixed or definite composition an element that's composed of only one type of atom, or a compound that is composed of two or more elements and always combines in the same fixed, definite proportion. An aluminum can, for example, consists of many atoms of aluminum. This is a type of matter that's an element composed of only one type of atom. In further slides, we'll classify different substances according to the type of matter that defines it. Let's revisit our chart. We see here that matter can be separated into two broad categories, pure substances or mixtures. Among those pure substances, we have two subcategories, elements and compounds. Elements are pure substances that contain only one type of material, such as the following, copper, lead, and aluminum. We see here the abbreviations for these elemental species, copper, lead, and aluminum. Their abbreviations are Cu, Pb, and Al. Notice this copper penny consists of only copper atoms. Some of the newer uh, pennies that appear to be copper contain a mixture and they contain things such as zinc as well and aren't pure copper. But older pennies may have only copper as their only component. We see here a periodic table and we can visualize some elements on it. Here are some of the more common elements that we may see in everyday life. Here's aluminum, which has the symbol AL. Here's copper, which has the symbol CU. Also, silver, which has the symbol AG. Some others we might see in everyday life are chromium, which you might see on a car. It's bright and shiny. It has the symbol CR. Element number 82 is lead, which has the symbol PB. Uh, some of these symbols come from older Latin terms for the elements, such as plumbum for lead, because it was previously used in plumbing. You won't find compounds on the periodic table. Compounds contain two or more elements, and they're mixed in a definite ratio every time. Elements you'll find on the periodic table, and these comprise compounds. Here we have hydrogen peroxide, which is an example of a molecular compound, H2O2. Table salt, which is also an example of a compound. This is an ionic compound, which we'll talk about later on. Table sugar, C12H22O11. This is a molecular compound. And water, which is also a molecular compound. Notice the elements that comprise these compounds. Hydrogen, oxygen, sodium, chlorine, carbon, hydrogen. 
These are all found on the periodic table, but the molecules themselves are not. But we can gain information from the periodic table that can help us understand some of the properties of the molecules, such as molecular weight. We can derive the molecular weight from the periodic table, from the atomic masses of the elements. Table salt is a compound that contains the elements, sodium and chlorine. We see here uh, a visualization of sodium chloride, which is table salt. Sodium is a shiny, soft metal that you can actually cut with a knife. It's also very reactive. And chlorine is a green, toxic gas. These combine to form sodium chloride, which is a completely different substance or at least it seems different to us. We actually consume it and it provides essential nutrients for us. So the decomposition of table salt, sodium chloride, provides the elements sodium and chlorine. That's how we can get sodium metal and chlorine gas from table salt, from sodium chloride. And where do we get table salt? That's right, from the ocean. The ocean has vast quantities of sodium chloride. A mixture is a type of matter that consists of two or more substances that are physically mixed but not chemically combined. Two or more substances in different proportions or substances that can be separated by physical methods. A mixture of a liquid and a solid, for example, can be separated by filtration. Here we have an example of a liquid and a solid in a mixture. We can separate something, for example, like sand and water, which is a heterogeneous mixture. We could separate sand and water by filtration. Previously, we categorized pure substances into elements and compounds. Now we'll categorize mixtures into homogeneous and heterogeneous. In a homogeneous mixture, the composition is uniform throughout. The different parts of the mixture are not visible. Here's an example of a homogeneous mixture. This is a solid mixture, brass, which is copper and zinc. It's an alloy. It's a metal alloy, which has copper and zinc. Those are not chemically combined, and therefore it's a mixture. Another homogeneous mixture would be milk. Milk is a homogeneous mixture. It isn't a pure substance, but it can't be easily separated with methods like filtration. Brass is a solid mixture. Milk is a liquid mixture. And we can also have gaseous mixtures. For example, a breathing mixture that may be used for scuba diving like nitrox, which is oxygen and nitrogen, heliox, which is oxygen and helium, or trimix, which contains oxygen, helium, and nitrogen. These are mixtures that may be used to reduce the side effects of diving. The other category of mixtures is a heterogeneous mixture. In a heterogeneous mixture, the composition varies from one part of the mixture to another, and the different parts of the mixture are visible. Copper, metal, and water form a heterogeneous mixture. Another heterogeneous mixture, as I mentioned earlier, would be sand and water, or perhaps even dirt and water, like mud. As you see, we classified matter according to whether it is a pure substance or a mixture. Mixtures can be separated into homogeneous and heterogeneous, and pure substances can be separated into elements and compounds. An example of a pure substance as shown here is copper. A compound, for example, is water. A homogeneous mixture could be brass, and a heterogeneous mixture could be something like water and copper or sand and water. Let's identify each of the following as a pure substance or a mixture. Pasta and tomato sauce. 
aluminum foil, helium, and air. Pasta and tomato sauce is a mixture. Aluminum foil, made only of aluminum, is a pure substance. Helium is an atom, it's an atomic species, and that is a pure substance. Air is a mixture of gases like nitrogen, oxygen, and maybe argon, and carbon dioxide, and therefore it is a mixture.